I think we live in a particularly vulgar and ma- like a, I wouldn't even say masochistic. It's a, it's just a psychotically profit driven society at all costs. Pathologically. How about Pathological, that? Yeah. It is pathologically obsessed with material status and whatever, you know, and, and in the pursuit of that, Anything that is sacrificed is okay. And I'm not sure if that is because we have been modernized so quickly. You know, industrialization happened in like the, in the a generation. speed in, in which it happened in this country is like unheard of, mm-hmm. right? I'm not sure if that's what it is or I'm, or, and <laughs> recently I started thinking, is it in our national spirit of inferiority? You know, because we have an inferiority like thing. I don't know. Like, I don't know. But I really hate it. And, but the thing is, this is where I'm going. Okay. The one thing that came out of that, uh-huh. this toxic pathological, you know, value system and culture is uh-huh. incredible social commentary in the form of film and art yes because i'm thought i'm thinking i'm also thinking about squid game and yeah. how what an accurate <laughs> metaphor like an a- analogy that was for korean society um and parasite i think is like number one like i think it's the top um it, it just depicts korea the best modern korean society in a way that I am very astonished to see that it happened in one film. Like a yeah, it film. seems to capture a lot of what are the problems with Seoul yeah. in one film. Mm-hmm. Seoul is the shining example of this, um, this new form of capitalism, which is seeped into the cells of individuals. Mm-hmm. And so that capitalism is not just... You know, the idea of exploitation is no longer just going to work and being exploited for your labor. Mm -hmm. It's now that a kind of self-exploitation that happens Mm -hmm. in terms of competition with your neighbors Mm -hmm. and your your friends, with yourself, (laughs) with your siblings. Mm -hmm. And so what we find in this movie is the the people who are doing well, Mm -hmm. the wealthy, Mm -hmm. and the people who are not doing so well, who work for them. Yes. And this extends to, uh, you know, labor such as being a housewife, or sorry, a a maid, Mm -hmm. uh, and the housewife doesn't have to do shit. Right. And she's kind of this flighty, brilliant performance by, what's the... Cho Yeo Jung. Yeo Jung Cho, yeah. Yeah. Uh, brilliant performance by her. She she does this perfect flighty kind of um, housewife who doesn't have to do anything. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and you know you've got a maid there, and then you've got you know the the English tutors, mm-hmm. and you've got the driver mm-hmm. for the for the husband who works for a tech company. Yeah, and makes a lot of money through the tech company. So you've got this divide between, and and they kind of assume themselves into this lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Because they can live at this house, m- just and totally grift off of them, right? Yeah. Um, rather than their current existence of folding pizza boxes, right? And living in a shitty, right? Um, basement dwelling kind of apartment a with a window basement. that peeks out into the street, and people are pissing on the streets yeah. and drunk, you right. know, in a back it's, alley. It's not so recently, by the way. The city of Seoul, well, the government, finally, after like decades decided that these were not suitable living um, conditions for people, right? It's, mm-hmm. against, it's against human rights to, you know, rent out these places okay. because they flooded and people died. In right, there. we had a flood recently. Yeah. Um, and, and the thing is... The thing in Parasite happened, yeah. which is there's a massive flood. It happens all the time. The, the, the basement apartment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, apparently this happens all mm-hmm. the time. But it took the... Mo- this is what I love about Korean movies. Mm-hmm. It's a small enough culture. This couldn't happen in the... Well, it could happen in the States. Mm. But it usually doesn't... The U.S. political system is so... 
I mean, fucked. it's... Well, Korea is the size of Vermont. Yeah, and so you can actually yeah. think that the, the impact of the arts yeah. on society mm -hmm. actually works mm -hmm. uh, from time to time, and not, maybe not in a systemic way. Right. But things like oh, now these basement apartments are considered a human rights violation mm -hmm. because of the of the movie, right. which is fantastic. Yeah. But that's kind of the setting of the. That's kind of the. Uh, you know, the collision that happens in the mm -hmm. movie. There's also um, not so subtle uh, hints that Bong Joon-ho is uh, offering in terms of what you could see as American colonialization. Of yeah, Korea. totally. Oh my gosh, yeah. It was brilliantly done. Yeah, yeah. So and, and it was subtle. So there's yeah. not only the English lessons, mm -hmm. which is one aspect. Mm -hmm. It's also um, like... The, that the kid is really into Native American culture. Yes. And the cult, yeah. yeah. The mediated, yeah, version of Native, Native Right, right. Yeah. And where where the where the wealthy in the United States just took over Indian yes. land. Mm -hmm. And here you've got this kind of culture this American culture that this kid is really interested in mm -hmm. and um, kind of permeating, you know totally. the whole thing. Yeah. Um yeah, so they, so there's these these colonial kind of underpinnings. There's also that he works for a tech job, um, you know, and it's all kind of modeled on, you know, the Silicon Valley of the 1990s totally. and yeah. things like that. Um, it's just it's just fascinating, and I love Bong Joon Ho, and I love Korean film for being able to do this, which is to bring in these um, these political elements that you pick up on a subconscious mm -hmm. level that really draw these things out mm -hmm. and um the tech mogul or whatever yeah. he um korean so there's no real old money in this country right like any money is like it was brought about pretty, by tech yeah and development yeah and so if you're korean old money it will go back like the furthest it would go back would be three generations, I think, like mm -hmm. three to four generations. Mm -hmm. And that's as old as, as you get, right? Mm -hmm. And it's usually like kind of shameful to be old money because it implies that your family at some point was a Japanese. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like during the call the when we were colonized by Japan, like your family probably sided with the Japanese government. And that's how you got wealthy or something, right? Or whatever. But that it's some sort of Japan-related wealth that was a little bit taboo. So unlike most cultures that I've lived in, there is a celebration of new money here. Mm. It's like, oh my God, you did this yourself. Mm. And mm. wow, you're like better than everybody because you are the first generation mm -hmm. to, uh, to have this massive wealth and i'm gonna do it too and that's why we worship steve jobs bill gates right yeah they, like this Koreans country really oh my god yeah when steve, steve jobs. jobs died there were i was there like people crying and i was shit. here when it happened like, why are you crying like yeah <laughs> yeah and at that movie there were like these like nerds korean nerds crying like mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. at the steve jobs movie theater uh, at the movie theater in the Steve Jobs movie. And I was like, dude, what the hell? Um, anyway, nothing against Steve Jobs. I love Apple products. But anyway, that's the kind of mentality that's maybe different from like, you know, I mean, I, I lived in France for nearly a decade and it's the opposite, mm -hmm. right? It's like, oh, you yeah. made all this money yeah. yourself. <laughs> 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 that's, oh, so you must be really dedicated to money you know like that's mm, sort of mm, like mm. the french well but yeah. that's the korean but koreans are proud of now. it yeah, yeah they're proud of yeah. it and it is it has never been more pronounced than now mm -hmm. on during this post-pandemic and an impending massive financial crisis mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it is so heightened at the moment mm -hmm. um which is the reason we see like that uh cryptocurrency dude who is now like a riff like fleeing from like you know his passport is near no longer valid because he's like hiding from the interpol wants him like the, he's hiding from the korean government because koreans were trying to get quick money on this cryptocurrency yes and they also worshipped this guy who was a scam artist yeah who, yeah, who yeah. was basically he, it was multi-level marketing there's a cult figure element to korean yeah. society 
it's not really in this film, I don't think. It, that that aspect maybe is not. No, but I'm trying to I'm trying to explain yeah. that new money is a good thing here. Yeah. And it was um, And he is a shining example. He is the, a shining the example. The father and the yes. husband is a shining example. Right. And he's also aloof to everything that's going right. on. He, right. You can tell he's smart. Yeah. Like he and some of the in- most interesting scenes he has is uh-huh. when he's in the back seat of the car totally. and being driven around by the driver. Yeah. And he's like because this, this one scene where the driver, um, what's the actor's name? Song Gang Ho. Yeah, he's really well known in, in Korea. He was in Memories of Murder and mm-hmm. um, so, I, Snowpiercer. Snowpiercer. Um, Thirst by Park Chan Yo. Miliang. He's the priest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so many great films. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's like driving. <laughs> he's like, Shippa. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's yeah. like, yeah. At, a, at another driver. And, right. you know, like the guy's like, mm-hmm. because of. Mm-hmm classy driver would not do this right but what's funny is that the the father figure you know the the tech mogul or whatever he is disgustingly new money and he's not classy he's not and he demonstrates this over and over he's so he's so perfect i mean he's so the 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 characterization of him (laughs) is so absolutely perfect because i know him so well Mm. i i i know this motherfucker so well I, I deal with these people every day mm-hmm. and they have this um, innate vulgarity about them that mm. actually becomes worse with the money. Mm-hmm. So it's actually the vulgarity heightens with the money and the status because mm-hmm. they were like, they, there's nothing vulgar about not having money, but there is something very vulgar about being obsessed with money and also using money as power mm. and using money and your money to oppress other people. Mm-hmm. That is what I call vulgar. Mm-hmm. It's not that you don't come from anything, you know, there's nothing vulgar about people, you know, who are making a hard, honest living. But that guy, mm-hmm. there is a certain vulgarity about that. And in American literature, it has been explored. In French literature, it has been explored. And now we are exploring, finally exploring to, this yeah. in Korea. Right. And I think this is a very good thing. Well, it's it's just the power of this film. Mm-hmm. Because here's the other element to this film that's important to say. Like, you and I met in 2019. Mm-hmm. And we kind of hooked up Mm -hmm. in Chiang Mai. Mm -hmm. Why did I say it like that? I don't don't know. know. It's funny. (laughs) Um, We hooked up in Chiang Mai in January. (laughs) Yeah. And, you know, I was going to leave and go back to my job in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. The pandemic pushed back our semester, so I got to stay for another week. And I came to Seoul to be with Mm -hmm. you. And that's right when the Academy Awards happened. Yes, and then you watched it. And we watched the Academy Awards in your apartment in Shinsa. Yeah. And... Everybody was stunned, and it was mm-hmm. amazing. Mm-hmm. And it, what Koreans really love <laughs> is to be on the public radar. Totally, yeah. And we saw that with uh, Kim Yana, this the yeah. figure skater. Yeah, definitely. We saw this with the Olympics. Mm-hmm. Um, Even though it had personally had nothing to do with you, like as a person. <laughs> hey, it's in the blood, man. It's in the <laughs> Korean blood. Okay, so when Parasite won the Academy Awards, I didn't think that that had anything to do with me. Like, it wasn't, like, I didn't feel pride. You're different. In a, yeah. But Most it's Koreans, problematic. It's problematic to claim that is what I'm saying. Fucking poor BTS. The whole country looks to them as public servants. But this is how nationalism works. This and is, it's this is, wrong. Yeah, it's I, vulgar. Yeah, it yeah. is. So, but, so all of a sudden there's a swelling of pride. Mm-hmm. And then Squid Game happened mm-hmm. um, more recently. But all of this is compounded, and Korea is now legitimately this amazing um, producer of movies and television content, you know, for streaming and and in the theater. It's entertaining, all right, especially if you don't live here. But it's so it's so incisive, um, politically, socially, in a way that I don't think. I mean, obviously, other nations' cinema is able to do this, but. Korea is doing it so well. Mm-hmm. Um, and this film is an example of that. Mm-hmm. And so it's legitimately 
a powerful film that is also very entertaining and very well made. Mm-hmm. I think you and I both, when we finished watching it, we were like, that movie is better than we thought it was. Yeah, it was better than the first viewing. So we saw it uh, before the Academy Awards, right? I mean, yeah, I didn't know you back then, but I saw it. Okay, yeah, so I saw it and you saw it, we saw it separately. But yeah, yeah, and and it was great. Mm -hmm. But then it wasn't until this viewing, Mm -hmm. after the pandemic, maybe, after me being in Seoul for a while, after the flooding, yeah. After the Itaewon tragedy, yes. we watched this movie. Right. And all of these elements started to come together. Mm-hmm. So, what it says about soul, I, I don't know um, if it's easy to capture what that is, mm-hmm. but it is this massive obsession with wealth. Mm-hmm. But what Bong Joon-ho does that's quite genius is he doesn't make a good versus evil. See, this would be, I think, what American cinema might do. Mm-mm. Is it's going to cast the, the, the good underclass guys the guys. as the good mm-hmm. guys yeah. overcoming mm-hmm. the bad guys, even as the United States celebrates mm-hmm. the type of families yeah. that are the wealthy family. Right. Narratively, cinematically, mm-hmm. artistically, we like to celebrate the underdog who come, who overcomes, right? Yes. So they would be the good guys, especially now with... Um, for lack of a better term, woke culture. Um, what you've got here is the... the a fucking shit show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's just a shit show. So the, the, the lower class which are kind of shady too. T- totally shady, which is how things are. Yeah, exactly. More often than not. Yeah. It's a fucking everybody's shit show. Everybody's shitty yeah. and everybody is caught up in the same oh, yeah. money-driven... Uh, psychology, right. psyche, condition of this new form of capitalism that pervades our pores. Absolutely. Yeah. And everybody is, I hate this word, a victim mm. of this system, in my opinion. Yeah, okay. Yeah, even uh, the wealthy. Yeah, legitimately. legitimately. Yeah, legitimately. Yeah, even the wealthy, the wealthy yeah. yeah. I mean, I know that sounds very like, oh, no, no, I think no, it, let the well, bath cake, but... <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I don't mean it in, you know, that yeah. they, their suffering matches, you know, the suffering of like people who legitimately well, I, yeah. suffer, but... I don't think you could quantify that. It's not, it's not quantifiable, yeah. but I do see a lot of suffering, you know, unnecessary... Mm just it, it, and i call it poison it's it's like poison that's a good word yeah that's the right word i think and once you drink that poison i mean i almost kind of drank that poison recently like i got really caught up on making like hitting a certain number mm-hmm. of you know like because i freelance so i could the harder i work the more money i make mm-hmm. and i recently went through a burnout but I got really caught up. I was also like trying to, you know, do the thing that everybody does. Like, you know, I was like, oh my God, everybody's buying a house in Seoul. So Mm -hmm. I should get a mortgage. Mm -hmm. And this nearly just killed me. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I can't afford it. Mm -hmm. Right? Like I'll have to work like this for the next 20 years in order to afford it. Right. Barely. And then what did I do for 20 years? Like I bought an apartment and sold, you know, like, mm-hmm. and then so recently I decided this is not the life that I want. All right. But I understand it manifests differently for people, you know, in different, you know, tax brackets or, you know, mm-hmm. whatever situations, but it's the same yeah. fucking poison. And it... But it's a daily poison. It's, it's, it is. It's, it's something that everybody drinks yeah and it just happens at different expressions yes <laughs> different yes. forms different levels and don't you know for some reason understands this in such an acute way mm. that it and it's so subtle because the squid game director he understands this too but it's also very like in your face mm-hmm. like it's very dramatic and obviously it's it's a masterpiece i think squid game when mm-hmm. i think back on it it's brilliant um, because it's a commentary on like people taking out loans, you know, people, desperate people. People overspending. Yeah. So what happens in Korea is people, there's, there's a lot of, or what happens in Seoul mm-hmm. is that there's a lot of people who drive sports cars, for, for sure. example, yeah. who can't afford their rent. Mm-hmm. 
We the, call them car poor. So they're poor because they spend too much money on their cars. So then the question comes up, why do they spend so much money on their cars? So this has been, I've, I've, I've watched YouTube videos on this of people like, um, it, they're like testimonies of people who, um, young people who mm -hmm. got cars that they couldn't afford. Mm -hmm. And like, it's like interviews on like why they did it. Whatever. And it's because, you know, for me, I feel like there's nothing much to do in this country for young people besides show off your wealth, go to clubs. That's it. Yeah. That was going to be my answer. Yeah. Um, because we didn't teach them anything else. All we taught them was that there is a moral obligation that each of us have to make more money than our parents mm. and give it to them. That is basically the base of our education, right? Mm. Um, I was born in 1983, so I'm mm. an echo baby boomer. Okay. The, our education entirely revolved wow. around, like quite literally, you need to make this country richer. You need to go out there. You're going to work hard, right? You're going to study hard. First, you're going to memorize all these test you know, <laughs> answers. Yeah. And then you're going to get into one of the three acceptable colleges in the country. Yep. Um, which I kind of did miraculously. Mm -hmm. And then you need to go out and get a job at one of the four acceptable companies mm -hmm. that <laughs> fuel basically like single-handedly like, you know, carry our economy. Yeah. And then, or you should um, be like an outlier of some sort mm. and, achieve fame for your country mm, right, right, right. and then they always say like Nara like you need to do this for your country mm -hmm. and I was always like why 